My name is Manu, and I am passionate about well-being. Yoga, meditation, fitness, and different movement modalities are the means by which I share my passion with others. My path into well-being started many years ago, and along the journey, I've met incredible and inspiring people who helped me finding a more holistic sense of my own wellness and of who I am. Wise Minds is a space where I share co-creative conversations that I have with my fellow friends from the yoga, movement, wellness, psychotherapy, and spiritual fields. I hope these conversations inspire you to create your own sense of well-being and give you a whole new view of who you are. Hello and welcome to Wise Minds. I'm your host, my name is Manu. Today is our first episode and I'd like to share with you a nice interview with my friend Gaetana Varela. Gaetana is a, a conventional medicine doctor as well as a Chinese medicine doctor and she's gonna let us know about her journey into medicine and her journey into holistic therapies. I hope you enjoyed this interview. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Yes, <laughs> it's been some time now that we don't see each other. And uh, well, so uh, I'm just gonna uh, talk a little bit of the background of uh, our relationship, uh, just for the, our audience to know about, about yourself. So I basically met you in, at Kamalaya because we used to work together there. And uh, I remember having this uh, connection right away because you're Spanish, I'm Spanish, and you know. <laughs> so suddenly we have this, this connection. And uh, yeah, I've been, you know, we have been talking a lot and I've been following you also while uh, you are in Samui and I still in Bangkok. And I always have been very fascinated uh, because of your, how would I say this, your, your double um knowledge can i say it this way you have your background your main background is the traditional medicine you are a medical doctor but also at the same time you are very interested into the natural medicine you're a chinese medicine doctor i would like you to let us know a little bit more about that and and why this okay. journey and yes so i like to make a um a note here and we I usually say I come from the conventional medicine background mm -hmm. uh, because when people say traditional medicine uh, referring to modern Western medicine I don't find this term is correct because it's not traditional at all it's common it's the most common one or the most used um, it's the mainstream if you want to call it that way but it has nothing of tradition left in it anymore mm -hmm. um so i like to call it either conventional medicine or western medicine or mm -hmm. um uh mainstream medicine uh, it can be called in many ways but uh, mm -hmm. i like to refer as traditional medicines to every, any other system that comes with a country's tradition um so referring to traditional mexican medicine traditional indian medicine also called as ayurveda uh traditional um of course chinese medicine unani medicine there's so many traditional medicines that are indeed part of the country's tradition that um i think uh, it is important to make a little bit of a distinction so i'd rather call it conventional medicine i used to be so yes i used to be a conventional doctor i um, I did make my uh, eight, nine years of med medical school. Um, in Spain is a little bit different than in maybe the US or Canada where uh, we go under a heavy six year full on training in school. And then we have a state exam that allows us to go either to one specialty or another. And I did go to a specialization. I became a resident doctor in um, how do you call it in English, like uh, occupational health medicine, mm -hmm. which is very similar to a family doctor, but taking care of the health of the 
employers of a company or a sector in society that dedicate themselves to certain job descriptions. Mm -hmm. um, I did not finish that degree, uh, so that my specialization, I did not end up fin finishing my, my specialization because I, by the third year out of four, I was already, um, I had already been very curious about other types of medicine like um, acupuncture and natural medicine, naturopathic medicine. And I had already been studying those medicines at the same time as I was specializing in occupational health medicine. It all started with um, many guests, many patients in, in some of the departments where I was rotating as an intern doctor, as a resident doctor, um, reporting very good benefits from things like acupuncture, mm -hmm. things like supplements. And, you know, when you're a resident doctor, you, you, you know, you're under the supervision of another doctor um, who's more experienced. And if the doctor who's more experienced uh, hears someone saying that they've improved and it's, they've started with acupuncture, the doctor will probably most likely laugh. Or at least that's what happened wow. when when I was there. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, and to, for me at the be at the beginning, I also laughed. We never study anything related to other types of medicines in the whole six to ten years that a, a, one of these um, full trainings in as a medical doctor can be. And you know, we're when you ask in the school about in in med school about something kind of alternative all of the doctors will say that that's not their field and they will just not be able to an answer any of your questions, mm -hmm. okay? So, so we are complete ignorance in that field as far as I am concerned, as far as I am when I was studying. I guess, I so, guess, Kai, let me, let me just say something for a second because uh, I have seen that sometimes it, it's, it's like a common thing and with other things, like even with uh, yoga or meditation, like I think sometimes science, it's yet to explain many of the things that come from, uh, you know, the ancient wisdom or traditional knowledge and wisdom and medicine, because science cannot explain. Sometimes the, the answer would be like, okay, we don't know. We just de uh, deny that that can be possible. And I think that kind of resonates with the story you're telling, which is very interesting. Exactly. So that's the main thing. Science is so new that it has no way of yet finding how to prove certain things that are so old. Mm -hmm. Now, science have, has had a great evolution in the centuries, the couple of centuries that it's been working as it is, and the scientific method is very good for validating certain things. But we don't have the tools or the machinery or the yet knowledge enough as for researching other fields of humanity, of nature. Mm -hmm. that, so then science says, oh, that's not proven. Well, it's not proven with your method and with your actual tools right now. But perhaps in a future, I always put the same example. When scorp scurvy... Uh, was killing thousands of millions of people in the Middle Ages. This um, doctor realized that the sailors who one year took too many oranges and lemons that had been um, overproduced in the, in the village, when those sailors came back, not so many had died or contracted scurvy. Mm -hmm. Now, in those times, there was no explanation at all about what lemons could be doing for that disease. They only knew the name and the um, uh, symptoms of that disease, scurvy. But they started treating with, with lemons and oranges and citrus and onions and things like that, that disease. And, and it became very rare suddenly. We, we barely see scurvy anymore. Mm -hmm. And it was not two centuries after that that the vitamin C was discovered vitamins had not yet been discovered mm, nobody had ever a, known, talked about a vitamin and it was not wow. about two centuries after that that they discovered oh there's things called vitamins that play a huge important role in metabolism and there's one particular vitamin called vitamin c that is 
needed for the cells and the immune uh, systems development, proper development for pro protection in the body against many other diseases. So this doctor was classified as crazy just for prescribing this wow. um, lemon cure. But it was two centuries after that that we discovered it was scurvy was produced by the deficiency of so, this vitamin. So are you, are you saying like in a way they wouldn't find the, they wouldn't in a way see or understand the relationship between the fact of having fruit with them and then ha not having the, the, the scurvy, the, the, the disease? They wouldn't find that real connection or? Well, they found that connection, but they, they thought that was kind of crazy by, the, I by see, then. I it see. was not a medicine. It was not something. And what I tried to say with this example is that, for example, with acupuncture, mm -hmm. acupuncture is a very, very personalized treatment. Two persons, two different people, two different patients with the same Western diagnosis, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, for example, who come to the consultation of a Chinese doctor will never have the same treatment prescribed because the diagnosis even is different. So one person may be suffering high blood pressure due to a liver cheese stagnation, and another person may be suffering high blood pressure due to a kidney yin deficiency. Yeah. So the treatment is going to be very different. And or med with meditation, the efforts that people gain from a yoga practice or a meditation practice will be different as well. And they can be different for the same condition, you can you may use two different meditations or two different yoga practices for the person to feel better and improved. And this is something that the scientific method will never be able to research mm. because the scientific mm. method requires that the same technique is used for everybody. Totally. For I'll able to be proven. Totally. I love that you emphasize that because I think we are so unique and we all have like different type of bodies. And I love that size of, uh, of the traditional medicine that focus mm -hmm. on like individual needs, individual issues. That's awesome. Exactly. So anyways, going back to my early years as a resident doctor, when I started discovering that so many patients were improving with certain other that I used to call alternative practices, which I don't like to call like that anymore I, uh, because I don't find them alternative for me anymore. Mm -hmm. But I started doing my small research, a little course here, a little course there. And I realized that, yeah, I got it. I needed to go deeper into that knowledge of uh, unconventional medicines. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I started seeing okay where can i do a master degree spain's not very strong on that um so i was looking um some places in the uk uh, researching in, in in kind of uh, germany switzerland other countries in europe that would be able to offer me um training in so-called natural medicines and then i discovered you know what they're super expensive i've got the money but they're super expensive and after seeing the results that in med school we're taught certain things because a doctor or a, a lobby in particular wants us to know about that and not about anything else, I thought, you know what, perhaps it's a good moment for doing my own research, my mm -hmm. own wow. um, tailor-made studies in natural medicine. Um, because looking at all of these um, topics and subjects that we would be getting in every different master degree that I was searching in around, uh, most of the things were things from other countries, mm -hmm. knowledge from indigenous plants, uh, knowledge from acupuncture or Ayurvedic medicines. And so I thought, you know what, why don't I just go to those places and learn about those things in every place? See, I might not get my beautiful title from a fancy university, but I will get for sure the knowledge that I'm looking for and the knowledge that needs to kind of come to me uh, instead of being filtered by someone else. Like if I've been told that I've been told that I've been told that I have to tell you this. So wow. I tell you, this, right. Uh, so that's how I embarked in a beautiful two year trip around mainly Northern and Central America. Wow. Um, where I got in touch with um, people of all backgrounds and kinds and uh, traditions and uh, immersed, uh, immersed in, in all of those um, teachings and learnings, opened my ears and my heart 
smiled at all um, moving thing that had something to tell me about and yeah I ended up spending six months in the mountains of Costa Rica with the traditional healers and the um, um, shamans and plant men and plant women medicine women who were teaching me the things they had learned from their parents and from their grandparents and from wow. their great grandparents and that world tradition that had perhaps, I don't know, perhaps did not have any scientific based, evidence based proof, but they had been using it for centuries. Totally, it has a test of With time. good results. Exactly. It has the so test of times and generations. Test of clinical mm -hmm. effects uh, being proven. And that was enough for me at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up spending uh, like a year in Mexico, a whole year in Mexico, uh, because I happened to you know, the universe puts everything into the right place. I happened to be asked in Mexico to, to build or, or, or uh, grow a medicinal, edible medicinal garden mm -hmm. in a beautiful um, organic oriented hotel. Uh, and uh, while I was there, it, it was in the middle of nowhere in the state of Puebla. And I hadn't, I mean, it's a small town village uh it has nothing touristy everybody was like asking me why are you there in the middle of nowhere it's got nothing to see nothing to do i said i don't know i just got here because of this opportunity to make a beautiful organic uh, garden medicinal garden for these people that are so nice and they asked me to do this and you know it's being in the middle of nowhere where you get the knowledge from also the people who have been there passing this oral information that's why I was in the middle of Costa Rica as well in the middle of nowhere just getting this uh, knowledge in my head and after a couple of day, days of being there and trying to start organizing myself they said oh but if you're learning about herbs that you would might want to go to the traditional hospital here um, what do you mean traditional hospital so they had in that little tiny village an integrative medicine hospital where the western hospital little tiny western hospital with just one or two gynecologists one or two surgeons uh three four gps a few bunch of nurses and very little services i want one x-ray thing kind of like very small uh, public western hospital attached to what they called the traditional medicine module so in that traditional medicine module they had three or four midwives, traditional midwives, um, three or four uh, herbalists, traditional herbalists, and two, three um, bone uh, kind of traditional chiropractors. Wow. So I said, okay, that's just what I was looking for. And it was just literally like one kilometer for me to walk from where I was staying to, there, to, the, to that little hospital. And I told them who I was, what I was doing, that I wanted to learn from them. They immediately opened their heart and knowledge to me and I ended wow. up spending every single afternoon of my week there for a whole two months uh, and ended, ended up doing a um, research paper um, of what we call reverse science which is okay so we're not going to search this plant and see which chemicals are in that plant to know which uses we can apply but the other way around okay you've been using these herbs for inducing labor or uh, calming coughs or whatever, getting um, easing pregnancy uh, and so on. So I'm going to find every possible evidence, every paper that talks about this herb and see if there's any reason why it could be so effective for the uses that you have been traditionally using it for during millennials probably and give you that background and you know what it was amazing i did like a research we chose we i ended up choosing like 25 30 plants that they very much used but i found incredible evidence to support their results and <clears throat> one of them was actually very amazing there's a herb that they use that says they call pega pega because when you're walking in the fields is it seeds kind of stick to your to your clothing or your skin um like a kind of a velcro Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. effect and they use that for 
women uh, for partners, uh, couples who have been trying to give birth, uh, like get pregnant and they haven't been able to do that. And they'd combine the tincture made of that herb with the temazcal, which is like the traditional um, um, steam room, okay, that they do also with herbs. And even when the gynecologist next door, the real, like the proper Western gynecologist has said, you know, you've got fibroids in your uterus, in your womb, your, your ovaries are really not functioning and so on. Even then, be, between somewhere, between one, three months, those women would get pregnant. Male would also undergo the treatment, the male of the, mm -hmm. the, the partner. So both were treated and the effects were amazing. And the only thing I could find regarding that herb on like on the research papers that I found was that it had a very good anti-allergic effect. It was very good against allergies. Mm -hmm. So I came to the conclusion, for example, with that amazing case, because it was amazing to see the amount of um, um, good results they were having with, with the, for the pregnancy uh, rates and I explained it, for example, or I suggested that perhaps those couples who uses sperm and um, vaginal mucus and liquids, fluids, don't kind of react well together. They might be a sort of allergic reaction, not allowing the sperm to actually go inside of them uh, or to be, you know, that the immune system of the female might attack it before the sperm mm -hmm. can actually uh, find its way in or even the... the the egg itself might be protecting too much of a layer against uh, unrecognized sperm or something like that. So by lowering the anti-allergic effects, I thought it was a very interesting thing to research further. So that was a beautiful um, kind of give and take uh, work we did there in Mexico. And that was well, amazing. Yeah. That, sounds, that sounds like a really great, amazing school for you after all your conventional medicine training, just go on your own go on your own in this journey, embark in this adventure and find those things. And as you say, like the universe sometimes puts you in the right place. And that was for you. That was the case for you, obviously. Exactly. And I want to point out that, uh, you know, I love this, uh, this story. And uh, however, I have to point out that I know you more as a traditional medicine, Chinese medicine doctor. In fact, I'm yeah. going to say here that one of the most amazing treatments I have ever had, it's been with you. <laughs> And it was super amazing. And it was a time for me that was just like, just so much going on. I was moving from uh, Samui to Bangkok. And I remember having this treatment with you. And yeah, it was just like some like kind of a very deep um, experience. And it was like my second time that I have done acupuncture. But I just found like both times I found, I found they were amazing. Kai, do you still hear? Yes. Oh. Sorry, yes, I'm here. <laughs> I just found like both times uh, it was amazing. Uh, but uh, yeah, i like you to, if you can give us a little bit of background. So, so what do you do now uh, with the Chinese medicine and where are you up to? And um, tell us a little bit more about that. Okay. Thank you, Manu. Thank you for those compliments. I'm very happy that it felt that way. I actually um, studied a master's degree in Chinese med traditional Chinese medicine, and I got a scholarship to go to Beijing University of Chinese Medicine um, for an internship after having such good results with my um, master's degree. Um, I have found that Chinese medicine is kind of, for me, the answer, the solution, and the explanation, and everything for many so many acute or chronic disorders um, and I mainly work through the Chinese traditional Chinese medicine theories um, and I work with acupuncture which is the needles moxibustion with which is a herb that we burn um, for bringing in heat mainly and with cupping okay there's many other modalities in Chinese traditional Chinese medicine I basically work with those three um, I also work with uh, ear reflexology and um, the experience with me is a bit of a mixture with everything else that I've been studying or uh, practicing before and during being an acupuncturist, uh, a Chinese doctor. 
Um, so something I've also found in Mexico with my um, Reiki training course, and I became ended up becoming a master in, in Reiki treatments. And you see everything I study, I end up doing it, I start doing it by a little bit of skepticism because my, my scientific mind, my, all of those years of pure medical training mm -hmm. give you this skeptical view about anything that's out of your comfort or um, uh, academic training zone. So what I did to you, for example, was not only the experience of feeling the chi all over your body with the needles and a good proper diagnosis so that I can perfectly know through the pulse, through the tongue, through your clinical symptoms and your clinical history uh, and by knowing you in person. So everything, every little detail you know about the person, you, everything you gain, any ex physical exploration I might be able to perform thanks to my previous knowledge in, in the ER or in Western medicine, everything just adds up some to the whole view that I may have from this person, from the patients, from, this, from whoever I have in front of me who's coming to me and asking for help. So then I, once you read, you hear, you listen to that person's needs in their body, in their mind, in their spirit, you can set a proper diagnosis and a very efficient treatment. Sometimes one treatment in a chronic condition, even I just had a person uh, who after five, six months of having chronic diarrhea and nobody else was able to help him. One session of acupuncture, he's never had um, any diarrhea ever before, ever again, sorry. So a proper diagnosis is super important for knowing which points you need to use. And I'm not saying that one treatment is gonna be enough for everybody. There's things that do require uh, further more treatments, but with a proper diagnosis, you may be do, able to do marvelous things. Not miracles, but marvelous things in one sole treatment. What I did with you was, or how I work with acupuncture is a combination as well then with my other practices. And depending on what you come for, I will usually do kind of a short meditation, a Reiki body scanner for both of us to realize where there might be something else going on in the physical, mental, or spiritual um, body. And then use the needles once the body is completely relaxed and the energy will be able to flow perfectly and give even more effect. Program even the needles with my Reiki knowledge and then perform even the Reiki treatment while you're having the needles, mm. which is very similar to what Chinese do with Qigong. Qigong is not only a type of exercise similar to Tai Chi, it's a medicinal exercise, but it's also energy transfer through the power of will and your hands. So mm -hmm. it's very similar to Reiki. I think Reiki is Japanese and Qigong is Chinese. So it's kind of overlapping. So then you just not only direct the energy and move it with the needles or with the moksha or with the cuppings, whatever technique you're using from tra traditional Chinese medicine, but then you're also helping the body have this profound rebalance experience that the mind and the, your conscious mind is also kind of feeling like, wow, mm -hmm. I am also doing it because I do it in a way as I'm trained for being a master in Reiki. I am trained in the way that I also give you kind of the view of what's going on, the power, the awareness, so that you are participating in your own healing mm -hmm. and you discover this way that you can, what you are able to do as well mm -hmm. by yourself. Mm -hmm. I find that I, and any of us practitioners who have the blessing of being able to have this knowledge and this experience for helping others who reach out, um, part of it is, it, it, the beauty is, to give you the power as well to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Certain things, of course, you need the guidance, but we are just guidance, right? All of us practitioners are just guidance towards what's going on in you. How can you change it? What made you fall into this so that you don't fall back into that? Yeah. Is it some habit? Yeah. Is it some thought? Is it some, you know, I use a lot of neuro-linguistic programming, a lot of things that are making you be out of your balance, out of your center, out of who you really are. So going back and teaching you how to go back and how to you direct 
your healing in future processes. Um, I find that it's a profound experience. And so, not only you have said this, thank mm -hmm. you, sorry. And no, um, I was going been, to say that uh, in a way, it's almost like you are helping the person to gain some power on their own healing. Is that right? Is that's correct. Mm -hmm. I find sovereignty, sovereignty to be one of the most um, precious things we have and having the ability to conduct your own decisions and feel free yeah, to, to actively your participate powers. on your own healing, right? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. One you of know, my it's, biggest, it's, yeah. it's great that you articulate this in this world because with, the, with your words, because I was able to feel that during the treatment, but I would never be able to articulate in such a way. But uh, my experience was like, I felt I felt that deep connection between us two, but I also felt like this, that somehow you gave me the space to, as we were mentioning, uh, finding that um, active partic participation from my side to realize, to see, to feel, and to understand for myself. Yes, mm -hmm. I appreciate that you felt that. Um, it makes both experience profound because in the end you come for a treatment, but we're all both, going to experience that time totally. and many acupuncturists will just you know put stick the needles leave mm -hmm. you there perhaps even leave the room go to treat someone else and so on <laughs> yeah. i think that the experience is for both of us and we're both healing in the process with we're both learning mm -hmm. um i'm going to be there with you at all times to guide you to support you to find uh, to remind you where you're at mm -hmm to continue listening to what's coming out because I might be sensing some difficulties, that some struggles, some challenges that you might be facing during that session that may correspond to challenges that kind of sustain or your pathology or your problem or something. So, so it is a beautiful connection and it's healing for both parts. And as a practitioner, I am kind of your guide in that moment, mm -hmm. allowing you to be my guide for other things and yeah i think i think that's the key as well for for healing really truly healing and i think i'm blessed to have this opportunity mm -hmm. that this life has given me to have um, the interest in this all this knowledge and this path that's so, amazing yeah. and and we are <laughs> blessed that you are sharing this with us because this is it's been like very inspiring conversation and uh, I hope to, ho to have you back in the show uh, more times. For sure, we're going to have to do one in Spanish for our Spanish audience. And uh, uh, I would like to ask you, where can we find you? Where are you online? Where can we find you? If you have a website or social media, please let us know. Okay, thank you, Manu, for that. So um, I am on LinkedIn as Caetana Varela Hall, of course. So, so I am in Facebook and instagram as silence is the mother of patience mm -hmm. silence is the mother of patience and um i have a blog uh it's called www.silenceisthemotherofpatience.wordpress.com mm -hmm. you may also find interesting information in there and i'll be very happy to guide even questions sessions online and um, mm -hmm. I post a lot of information for, for self-awareness, for nutrition, for, for people to gain that sovereignty. I think doctors, mm -hmm. medical doctors have been keeping all of that knowledge about health and the body. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I, I want to put uh, links to and your so social... Oh. Really yeah. Yeah, sorry, no, I think there was like a little bit of uh, cut there in the internet. I just want to say that I'm going to put uh, some links to your... Uh, to your social media and stuff in the in the notes of the show so people can find you and um, well is there anything else uh, you want to say today anything else that you think it's missing from this conversation something that you think you would like uh, a message that you would like to convey today well my message would be listen to your own body mm. because no matter how many practices knowledge training any of us practitioners may have physicians healers whatever we know about it generally and each of us as, as we have both said agreed before each of us is completely different mm -hmm. so whatever you each of us are sensing it's right 
kind of right or wrong or agreeing with us or not agreeing with us or this sounds right this does not sound right or this i totally resonate with it that is your biggest gift listen to that intuition listen to your gut listen to your heart and search for another opinion if something that they've told you no matter how renowned that practitioner may be if it doesn't resonate with you go and find someone else's opinion okay wow that's powerful that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much thank you for your time and um we'll see you back in the show very soon take care thank you manu Have a good day.